seriously gonna kill her. This letter is signed Belladonna. I've been waiting to hear the other side of the story. <clears throat> if you had asked me just a few years ago about my future, I can never have fathomed my life today would be as it is. So strange a path has the twists of fate set me upon that I awake every morning bewildered. Like a small child, I expect anything and everything to happen during each new day. The night my planned future snapped out of joy and took a whole new direction was the night my son Lucas died. I married Dr. Wolfra Wolfran in the spring, and we loved each other deeply back then. How young we were. He was an educated gentleman from the University of Ingolstadt, and I had my first and I had first assumed he would get a flat in Vienna. Instead, he convinced me we should live in my family's old castle and accept our roles as old-fashioned nobility to the little village down the hill. We moved into the castle with a staff of 30 servants, beginning the task of breathing life and joy into the majestic halls. At this time, I expected to live up my life as a lady of the household, uh, minding the servants and indeed raising children. I'm getting creepier by the second. It really is. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. Before long, our first son was born, and shortly after that, he once again departed. I was devastated, of course, but Lucas had been sickly from his first day, and even though my husband had blocked out the possibility from his mind, I was not entirely surprised when it happened. Nonetheless, it changed us. I believe Wolfram blames me for what happened, that he thinks it was somehow my fault. He retreated into his laboratory in the old dungeon and started doing unholy experiments and god knows what. Yeah, that does suck that she, like, right when he was born, he was sick and she knew that he was gonna die. That's, that has to be hard. Those were dark times. Instead of a household and a child to take care of, I now have no guests, practically, practically no husband, and no child. Um, everything I thought would occupy my time was gone, and all I could do was grieve in solitude. The castle staff left one by one until there was only a handful still here. My existence was meaningless, and I spent my days doing nothing. But I dealt with my grief in my own way, and in time the claws of melancholy began loosening their grip on me. In so many ways, I have Clara to thank for that. So she had a friend. I'm starting to think that she wasn't cheating with her. I'm guessing they were just good friends. More gargoyles. Actually, look at these ones. Or not. Those are a lot of gargoyles. Lupo, yes, they are. Ben Hilda, Arthur, Maya, Lena, Ismaldor, Ether, and Yosef. In that order. Interesting. Uh, let's stay inside for now. Let's go to the living room. <clears throat> this room looks completely abandoned. I suppose this is what happens when you're down to a skeleton crew of only one maid, no matter how fantastic she is. Another journal page. This one has drops of blood on it. Um, Belladonna must think, remember, hands, fingers, right words, words, hate. So Belladonna wrote this. Interesting. It's snowing outside. I have no concept of the current year, season, or even geographical location. Just so strange that she's like a she has clock parts and stuff. Oh, let's to see all the journals. That's a lot of books. Imagine you had books filled with every possible combination of letters. I wonder how much room they would take. There's a finite amount of letters, but unless we acknowledge a maximum length of a word, there would still be an infinite number of combinations, and the library would have to be infinitely large. Okay. 
A stuffed raven atop a bust of Pallas Athena. What a cheerful decoration. <laughs> Let's call them Annabelle and Dupin. It's funny how she's naming everything. Look, a perfect sphere. Let's see if I can get two parallel lines to intersect. I'm gonna get the journal page I last. I sit down and write a story. But with all these journals and diary pages lying around, it seems like I already may have. Look at all these old toys. Wind-up dolls, music boxes, and mechanical trains all around. I think this used to be a private hobby of the eccentric Dr. Wolfram's. Yeah, and then now those parts are in you, I bet. I'm guessing some of those parts are in your Another body. portrait. It says her name is Francisca Canosa. An old relative, no doubt. But I wonder how she relates to the Von Trauerschloss family. No idea. What the? I'm not going near that horrible cat. I'll have to get rid of it somehow if I want to proceed. That startled me. <laughs> All right, let's get the journal page. <laughs> the doctor's handwriting. I know it well by now. Jump scare cat. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Months have passed, and I must indeed conclude that the procedure was a success. The new Belladonna is certainly calmer, friendlier, and more docile. She gladly keeps me company in the laboratory nowadays, and she is polite and pleasant in everything she does. One is tempted to describe her demeanor as lobotomized, but no. When I ask her questions, she will answer in a clear and articulated voice, and she is responsive to all kinds of stimuli. So, what they're getting at is that she was awake and interacting with him already before she woke up with no memory, I guess. So, there's still a chance that she did kill him. Verily, I have gotten... All I could ask for, that troublesome maid is gone, and Belladonna is back with me, compliant as ever. Her behavior is ex exemplary. Our lives are returning to that idyllic past I had thought I had thought it lost in all aspects except one. No child giggles in these halls. But my research is proceeding rapidly, and the question presents itself, who needs a womb to create life? Oh, God. Maybe you're the maid? Well, they're making it seem like she's Belladonna. I don't know, maybe she is the maid. Who knows? I have made an unexpected observation, a side effect of the unliving condition. The household cat, a black beast and once Belladonna's loving pet, has gained a great mistrust for the latter's new form. A disquiet has fallen over the animal, and he will not go near the creation. Why is this, I wonder? Why is the lack of trust, the sudden and ferocious hatred? So that does make me think that she is Belladonna. Um, Belladonna's appearance seemed to me not much alike what the cat before so fondly gravitated towards, but evidently the beast perceives a difference. As a species, the cat has popularly been associated with witchcraft and mysticism. Their eyes do indeed strike one as remarkable. Is it perchance so that the feline oculus is capable of peering into a human soul and spirit, and so when faced with the created belladonna is distressed by the lack thereof? <laughs> Alright. So what can I do with the cat? Nothing happens. Candlestick? Interesting, but no. <laughs> Whack. I need something else. That won't work. Alright, so obviously I can't go to that door yet. So I guess I'm going outside. There's milk. There's a bottle of milk out here. Milk, bowl, give it to I cat. I how long it's been here. At any rate, it's frozen completely solid. Meanwhile, the no cat in this pool. is in fear of its life. Oh, the dead walk. A sound idea, but the milk is frozen. It can't be poured. Oh, 
Fireplace. I'll go to the fireplace. One more Belladonna letter. Let's read about this Clara figure. <clears throat> Clara Stiber was one of the several chambermaids we hired when we moved into the castle shortly after the marriage. In the warm light of recent events, I feel as though I could pick her out of a crowd already at this time, but I suspect the truth is that she was just another servant, one of many, and I didn't pay her close attention or pay her close to the attention I now know she deserves. The time following the death of Lucas is hazy and unclear in my memory. I know I spent most of my time in an armchair in the living room staring out the window. I, now, I know now that this must have been dif a difficult time for the staff as well. My apathy left them without purpose as more and more of the household was shut down. Soon the cooks and stable grooms began abandoning what they wisely identified as a sinking ship. As more and more of the staff left the castle to seek employment elsewhere, there was less and less reason for the rest to stay, and the household was quickly decimated. But throughout all of this, young Clara never f left my side, and she gradually sh uh, shouldered more and more of the household responsibilities, making it her task to take care of me and nurse me through my melancholy. It was her loyalty and industriousness when everyone else left that finally brought me back from my condition. And indeed, her love. As I now sit down to write, it has been long unbroken chain of happy days. Clara and I have the whole castle practically to ourselves and nothing to do but enjoy our lives and each other. We sleep in a new room every night, cook our own food, and have picnics under the tables or in front of the fireplace. We have no incentive whatsoever to uphold con convention and norms when this house has become like a secure pocket inside. The rest of reality... So she did have an affair. Yeah, it looks like it. In truth, this touches on what I treasure most in Clara. Neither of us reap any concrete benefits from our union, neither financial nor societal. There is no embedded purpose of producing heirs. Our relationship exists solely for itself and is its own reward. I am already adopting her adorable habit of naming inanimate objects. So, now we know where she got this habit from. She keeps naming everything in the castle. The castle is not quite ours, however. Wolfram still lurks like a gull downstairs and occasionally emerges and spends a night up here with me. We have little in common anymore. In fact, he is like a completely new person. His mind is vacant, his stare distant, he's thinner than ever before and shivers with the cold. Clara jokingly suggested that we might have him declared mad and sent off to an institution. An innocent idea in her mind, but with some planning, this act might eventually prove to be our surest path to finally reclaiming this old castle for us alone. <laughs> oh, wow. So they were scheming against him, too. <laughs> this must be the family cemetery. That is yeah, one Lady big Lucas cemetery. In, in the dining room. Why is that? It says Snowflake the pet cat. How oh cute. my gosh. The stone is so old and the name is run off. Creepy. The tombstone says Clara Steber. Seems oh. Seems like the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. Oh, I wonder if Clara came back from the dead and killed him. The tombstone says Clara Steber. This must be the grave of the wonderful maid I've heard so much about. I can't help but notice that it's been emptied. Okay, I'm creeped out a little bit. A note. Great God, why did I... Why did I not then expire? Um, why am I here to relate the destruction of the best hope and the purest creation of Earth? It was mere days ago, at the peak of our bliss, when Clara fell ill. She complained of headaches and tiredness, so I made a bed for her and laid her down to rest. 
For the next few days, I cared for my companion just as she cared for me and nursed her with all my love and compassion. We believed it was just a passing sickness and that it would be over shortly. Each morning we thought she was getting better, and each evening we realized she had actually gotten worse. And today, when I entered her bedroom, she was there, lifeless and inanimate. Uh, thrown across the bed, her head hanging down, and her pale and distorted features half-covered by her hair. In horror, I beheld the body of Clara, my love, so lately living, so dear, so worthy. I rushed towards her and embraced her with a door, but the deathly languor? I have no idea. And coldness of the limbs told me that what I now held in my arms had ceased to be the Clara whom I had loved and cherished. Alas, what foul curse lies in my gentle touch? I have lost, I have lost not only my child to the darkness, my husband to the devouring madness, and now my lover has departed this world as well. Is my love truly as poisonous as my omnia's name? <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Greenhouse. Boxes. Yes, those are indeed boxes. Whoopee. This place is pretty nice, though. This lantern might prove to be the very first thing that actually manages to shed some light on my situation. Ha ha. I'll keep it. An ordinary pot with some dirt in it. Isn't this a perfectly sufficient tool for creating beautiful light? A plant. A natural object standing in a pot, a man-made object. The plant can consume nutrition and grow bigger, and the pot can't. Neither of them can think. So what about me, then? I can think. I know that. But am I a natural or a man-made? Uh, good question, actually. You're a bit of both, I guess. More letters. Can someone tell me what happened to poor Clara? Both at the same time. Yeah, exactly. So another letter from Balladonna. Some time has passed since the demise of Clara. Quick uh, Stardew Valley question. I can't seem to be able to use bait on my fishing rod. Uh, you have to buy a better fishing rod to start using bait. Um, I'm not sure if the second, the third one definitely can use bait. I think the second one can too, but in a little while, you will get a letter saying, oh, we have better rods at the um, fish place, you know. And then, yeah, you can use bait on those. Yeah, the second one you can use bait. The third one you can use bait and lures, I think is what it is. Alright, some time has passed since the demise of Clara. As I calm down and regain control over my emotions, it occurs to me that there are some Mr. Mysterious circumstances concerning her death. The sickness that had come over her was swift and sudden indeed. Admittedly, my own medical knowledge is limited, but it still seemed to me that such an instant and terminal change in the bodily humors should not occur naturally. Could it be that she somehow ingested something that made her sick? But what? And from that line of thought, it is not a far leap to ponder if she was murdered. Um, it was long ago that I lost track of the details of my husband's deranged research, but I do know he handles lethal substances and obscure chemicals. How easy would it have been for him to slip something into Clara's food? So then, why would he do such a thing? Did he know about our, our affair? We were very careful, but perchance he guessed it despite our efforts. He would not go so far as to murder based solely on a guess, would he? The distressing truth is, I no longer have any way of telling what Wolfram is capable of. It is of vital importance that these notes never reach any eyes but my own. These are grave accusations I am scribbling down, and in ways of proof I do not even have anywhere to start looking, and yet the possibility is there gloating in its simplicity. Well, yup. <laughs> Obviously that's what happened. 
I like Belladonna. <laughs> Belladonna. This little plant has caused a lot of trouble. For a flower, it's not particularly beautiful, but for a murder weapon, it sure is. That's for sure. That she took it. It's a large tree. It looks very peaceful. Couldn't I have been reincarnated into one of those instead of being forced back into this mess? Yeah, that'd be cool. Nothing inside. Look at the flowers. Alright, looks like that's it. Back to the house we go. What a marvelous mausoleum. The plaque says, Francisca Canosa. This must be the resting place of the lady from the portrait in the study. I wonder who she is then. Alright, let's go melt that milk. <laughs> Go to the... Why isn't she walking? There we go. I'll let it stand by the fire for a while. It's thawed. The milk is now in liquid form. Hey, Charlie. How's it going? The milk pours easily. Into the bowl. Yes, happy Monday. I hope you're having a good one. You said you had today off, right? Heather Wyvern, Mashiro, <laughs> how's it going? Yep, so cool. Awesome. What are your plans? Or are you just gonna hang out and chill and just relax for Monday? How's it going? It's pretty. It's going pretty good. I just started playing this Belladonna game, and it was pretty interesting, actually. Your cat. Okay, so I can give delicious milk to my fearsome adversary, but why would I want to do that? This creature has nothing but scorn for me. It would just take my now. milk and keep attacking me afterwards. Nice. Unthankful thing. All right. Um. So they're basically hinting at me killing the cat. Thing, but no. No. I don't know why I thought that would work. Oh wait. Hmm. I think I see where this is going. Belladonna in the milk. I'm to plant into a powder first. Didn't I see a mortar somewhere in the house? Ah, uh, we're gonna kill the cat. Poor cat. Oh, thanks for the host. Interesting. So we're about to go kill Let's the cat. Find this plant into powder. All right, in Is the milk. This how Clara died. All right, and then make the cat more evil by raising it from the dead. Oh my gosh, poor cat. I feel bad now, but I had to get through. I'm not going near that horrible cat. I don't mean to I'll get close. To get yes, I know. Yeah. Yes, this should put an end to the grim reign of this beast. Rip, cat. Oh, he just fell over. Look, it's a key. And it has a funny tassel attached to it. No wonder the cat wanted to play with it. The animal must have managed to steal a key somehow. Poor kitty. Another note. This is strange. <laughs> cat this is, is afraid Belladonna's of the undead. signature, but the handwriting is just wrong. Oh, wow. I wonder if this was after she died, then. Belladonna, I write to exercise my brain. I find that my thoughts become more firm and solid if I force myself to put them down on paper. It doesn't matter what I write as long as I can learn to think again. And to remember. I must try and remember. I have no idea how long I have been this way. A walking corpse. A mimicry of a human life. An omnesh? Omnench? 
This is all the doings of my despicable husband. He could not be happier, the villain. He got what he wanted. An obedient wife, a beautiful Galatea that exists solely for his pleasure, if only he knew. Unhuman? Oh, okay. Gotcha. These notes are now the center of my universe, and I keep them well hidden. He doesn't know. He has no idea. The thought has not occurred to him that I might be thinking, might be a thinking being, and I intend to keep it that way. I am slowly and secretly, meticulously pulling my consciousness out of a black void. At first, I truly was a mechanical toy, responsive but never proactive. But gradually, I began to regain capacity for thought, and I quickly realized that I needed to keep this secret. These thoughts were now the only things in the world that truly belonged to me. Beginning to think again was horrible, in many ways worse, even worse than the state of blissful ignorance from which I had just emerged. I only managed to scribble down single, disconnected words at a time, more emotions than thoughts. Impulses, perhaps. My hands and fingers were stiff and clumsy. I remember cutting myself on the sharp pen once and not being able to prevent the blood flow. That makes sense, with the previous letter that just had a bunch of words on it and blood. I thought that would be the end for me. Surely Wolfram would notice the blood on my hands and get suspicious, but no, the self-absorbed fool merely stitched me up and let me go. I sometimes ply with the idea of what I would have to do to prove to him that I am a person, but I won't. The monster has other plans. <laughs> well, I'm almost done with the story. Can I? Saw the milk, grind the leaves, poison the pot. That was a lot of work to inspect this rather uninteresting ladder. <laughs> That's funny. The door is locked. That sounded like the sound Windows makes. Or what was it? Uh, AIM. AOL Instant Messenger. Wasn't that the sound that AOL Instant Messenger used to do when people logged on? <laughs> that explains the bloody letter. Yeah, exactly. Alright, so another ladder, ladder, another letter after she died. As my consciousness grows stronger, so does my hatred for my husband. Each morning he brings me with him down to the laboratory and places me in a corner. There I will stand for the rest of the day, still as a statue, silent as death. Occasionally he will throw me a glance or a smile. I find my body smiling warmly back, almost like a reflex, and this endocrination disgusts me. Wow. I think so, it's been so long. I know it does sound like it though. Like all of a sudden I was like, which one was it that did that sound? <laughs> I am a living decoration, a breathing statue of flesh, and his wind up log toy. Oh, his wind-up toy bride. But little does he suspect my eyes are darting across the room secretly and attentively following his smallest movements. I carefully memorize every step he takes, every note he writes down, every tiny detail of his ghoulish discovery. If only he knew how fast I am learning. What a willing student I am. Oh, wow. I, I still remember the ICQ sound for incoming messages. I actually never used ICQ. I tried once, I think, but I just it didn't work for me or something. I don't remember. <laughs> Alright. As of late, he has even picked up the habit of explaining his scientific work out aloud. It helps him think, I suppose. And I nod and smile and give little encouraging laughs at all the right places. He is muttering his darkest secrets to me, and I drink it all up. Uh-oh. <laughs> yep. She is planning. So, it is still possible that she killed him, you know. But I still, I want to know what happened with Clara, because Clara's gone. Or maybe, you know, she is Clara. I don't know. Maybe you're right, Lacoots. <laughs> Don't tell me is that the ICQ sound. 
And oh, if only he knew just how close he brushes with his own demise. Hundreds of times each dog he is close enough for me for my hands to reach up and snap his neck. My strong fingers around his throat slowly squeezing his precious life out of him. Wow, creepy. I want to hear it. Uh-oh. Oh, I, I know that sound. I've heard that sound before. Hmm. Alright, but no matter how close he stands, my arms will not move. I am a prisoner in my own corpse, staring out through glassy eyes, but unable to will any action into my own dead limbs. Call for me, and I will walk. Ask me a question, and I will talk, but my rotting brain is unable to form initiatives of its own. I am a golem following orders. Oh, that's depressing. Old info surfaces to check message. <laughs> Alright, uh, yet with each passing night, my willpower grows stronger. I write my thoughts down diligently and practice my mental capacities with all the resolve I have. The results are slow but reliable. One day soon I will have the tenacity to strike. Such a cheerful game. I know, this game is crazy. Yeah, that's why I wanted to pick this game, because I was reading it, and it's classified as horror, but it's a type of horror that I would actually be able to get through. Because I can't do scary horror. I just can't do it. Um, one of these days, his lovely life-size doll will suddenly find the power within her to execute her swift revenge. 